welcome dear students we are on the cec gurukul lectures and today's we are discussing regarding the fresnel by prism experiment in this fresnel by prism experiment we are using the fresnel by prism which is uh, which is uh, which is having the one angle 179 degree and other angles are 30 dash and 30 dash and uh, what are the condition to get the interference pattern that we require the two virtual sources so this fresnel by prism provides uh, the two virtual sources one source is s1 and another source is s2 from this experiment we are calculating the wavelength of uh, monochromatic light by getting the interference pattern this interference pattern we are getting the straight lines now on the screen we are seeing that uh, this is the arrangement of uh, fresnel by prism where we are having a fresnel by prism light coming from the source fall upon a fresnel by prism when the light pass from the upper part of the prism at the edge it diverges towards the lower part of the screen and it appears that it is coming from the virtual source s1 similarly when the light pass from the lower part of the prism then it bend towards the upper part of the screen through the edge and then it appears that it is coming from the source s2 in this manner we can get the s1 and s2 two virtual sources from the single source s and these two sources produce the interference pattern the middle part of the screen which shows the overlapping of the pattern of the light and it produces the interference pattern on the right hand side we are seeing the output of the monochromatic light as it appears red it means we use the helium neon laser monochromatic laser to get the interference pattern so this is the arrangement of fresnel by prism now how we calculate the beta as we are calculating the lambda and the formula we discussed which is beta into 2d divided by capital d beta is the fringe width distance between the two maxima or minima fringes after that we will calculate the 2d which is the distance between the two virtual sources then capital d which is the which is the distance between the slit and the eye piece so how we calculate the beta as we see on the screen that there is a cross wire from the eye piece we put on the fringes we select one of the fringes and put this cross wire on that fringes and we can calculate the main scale reading one year scale reading after calculating the least count then we multiply one year scale reading with the least count and then we can get the reading and we move this cross wire one by one on the another fringes so the cross wire is set at the center of the first bright fringe and the reading of the micrometer screw is taken in this manner we can get the uh, first bright fringe reading after that we move this on the another brighter ring then again we can get the reading at the micrometer screw and we can take the difference between two then we can find out the beta the fringe width the screw is the and moved in the one direction so that the wire falls in the succession at the center of the bright fringes and corresponding reading are taken for all the bright fringes then from this reading the width of the number of the fringes say if we are taking the 10th of ring are calculated by subtracting the first fringe from the 11th second from the 12th and so on we can take the difference between these uh, fringes after taking the mean fringe width beta for the one fringe is calculated after getting all the readings then we take the mean of that 
and then we can calculate the fringe width beta for the first fringe. Now, we how we can measure the 2D? We can measure the 2D by using the convex lens. First, we see the arrangement. You see here on the screen that this is the arrangement of the uh, 2D calculation. You see that uh, by prism S1 and S2 are the two sources, then light pass from the by prism, then it pass from the convex lens. One you are seeing on the dotted line and another or the solid line then light pass from this convex lens and then we can calculate the D1 and D2 by arranging this convex lens at the various position. Once it is nearer to the by prism and in the next step it is far from the by prism. So, what is the method to calculate the 2D without changing the position of the slit? by prism and the eyepiece a convex lens is mounted on the optical bench between the uh, two points. The distance D1 and D2 between the well defined images of the two virtual slits S1 and S2 are measured with the micrometer screw for the two position of the lenses. Again just we said the same experiment and the same fringes we are getting but the convex lens mounted between these uh, Fresnel by prism and the eyepiece. Now, the distance between N S1 and S2 is calculated by the 2D which is equal to root of D1 and D2. What is D1? D1 is the distance between the two image formed by the convex lens in the first position. And D2 is the distance between the two images formed by the convex lens in the second position. Then how we calculate? Just see the displacement method is used to calculate the distance between the sources. The distance between the sources as we see when the position is L1. When the position is L1 it, which means it is near to the Fresnel by prism then the distance between the source and the lens is represented by the u and then the distance between the convex lens and the eyepiece denoted by the v. So, at the position L we can find out d by 2 d is equal to v by u. The distance between the source and the lens is u and uh, in the second it is distance between the L1 and L and N1 and eyepiece is the V. So, D1 divided by 2D is equal to V by U. In the next position L2 which is nearer to the eyepiece or far from the Fresnel by prism we have D2 divided by 2D is equal to U by B. Now, the distance has changed from the source and the eyepiece. Now, this time it is U by V. So, now taking the cross we can get D1 by D2 divided by 4 D square which is equal to 1. Then 2D is equal to root of D1 and D2. By taking these positions we can calculate the value of D1 and D2. Two. Now, how we measure the D? It is very simplest to get the value of D. Just we measure the uh, position of the slit and the eyepiece uh, on uh, as on the optical bench. It is marked with the uh, scale. So, from that scale we can measure the value of D. We can measure the distance between the slit and the eyepiece. The distance between them gives the observed value of the D. It will be fixed throughout the experiment. Now, wavelength of the monochromatic light we can find out after getting the beta, after getting the 2D and capital T. So, lambda is equal to beta 2D divided by D. From this method we can find out the wavelength of sodium light uh, or helium neon laser any monochromatic light we can use to get the interference pattern. And from this interference pattern after knowing the value of beta 2D 
distance between two virtual sources and the distance between the slit and the screen we can calculate the wavelength of monochromatic light by using this formula. Now for uh, getting the reading we make a table. So, reading of for the measurement of the B we take the number of uh, fringes on the left hand side after that uh, we take the micrometer reading in uh, centimeter after that uh, the number of fringes at different fringes you see on the screen we are seeing that 1 to 10 and 11 to 20 then we take the reading of micro meter reading the centimeter after that we take the separation of the 10 bands in the centimeter we can take the difference between the 10 fringes we can take difference of 5 7 but it should be fixed throughout the experiment after that we can take the mean of the reading to calculate the fringe width beta. Reading of the D as uh, we are seeing that the position of focal length will position of uh, lens convex lens will change. So, we have to make a table in this table we will put micrometer reading when the lens is near the slit. So, we take uh, first image and second image then we can uh, find out the value of D by dividing d minus c then when monochromatic uh, uh, micrometer reading of the monochromatic light uh, when the lens is near to the eyepiece then again we can get c dash and c dash one image and second image we can get the value of uh, d2 d dash minus c dash and uh, after that uh, by taking the uh, formula which is root of d1 and d2 we can calculate the value of d. In this manner we can calculate the d by using this tape. What are the result of this experiment? We are calculating the d again capital D the value of d the small 2d and uh, then beta fringe width by using all these values we can find out the aim of the experiment that is the wavelength of monochromatic source that must be in the Armstrong that is the plus maximum probable error. As here we are using the monochromatic light of uh, sodium then its output is uh, 5896. If we are using the helium neon laser 6328 Armstrong we can take in this uh, experiment. Uh, now, what are the precautions of uh, this experiment? Uh, how we have to be careful in performing this experiment? Setting of the apparatus. The main point in this experiment is to adjust the optical bench. Optical bench should be adjusted in such a manner so that the slit Fresnel by prism and the eyepiece must be on the same level and the slit arranged in such a manner so that light from the source fall exactly and with the high intensity on this slit because if the light is having the high intensity or having the narrow output through this slit then it pass from the Fresnel by prism then we can get the good interference pattern. So, the light intensity which is falling on the Fresnel by prism should be of the of, uh, of the uh, higher manner. Then uh, the bench adjustment in such a manner so that uh, the slit the Fresnel by prism and the eyepiece must be on the same level. So, what are the precautions? The setting of the uprights of the same level is very essential. Second, the slit should be vertical and narrow. Narrow because we are dealing with the division of the wave front. Crossfire should be fixed in the center of the fringe while taking the observation from the fringe width. The crosswire we are putting on the fringes must be at the center so that the movement will be easier towards the next fringe. The micrometer screw should be rotated only in the one direction to avoid the blackish error. 
and uh, the reading should be taken carefully so that uh, error chances will be less so these are the precautions the fringe width should be measured at a fairly large distance as we are taking the difference of the 10 fringes we can take the 11 12 but the 10 is better as compared to the 5 so the fringe width should be measured at the fairly large distances convex lens of the shorter focal length should be used approximately 25 cm to get the value of 2d so that uh, uh, the uh, the focus the focus interference pattern we we can get easily the next and important the motion of ip should be perpendicular to the length of the bench and uh, then we can get the good interference pattern the important thing again is here that when the light pass from the slit fall upon a fresnel by prism the light must fall upon a the line which is on the fresnel by prism and from this line the two sources we can see clearly two virtual sources we can see clearly must be at the same distance must be at the same height we have to be careful by dealing with this experiment then what are the practical uses of this by prism means we uh, anyone can ask in the why why is that uh, what are the uses of this by prism why we are dealing with this uh, by prism that uh, first is we are determining the interference fringes we are calculating the interference fringes how we can get the it means we are using the uh, light uh, sodium light and we are getting the yellow fringes we are getting the uh, if we are using the so helium neon laser then we are getting the interference fringes of the red color second important part of this by prism is we are calculating the wavelength of monochromatic light of this interference pattern to used to determine the thickness of glass sheet placed on the source of the light to obtain the coherent source of the light this is one of the best example to calculate the thickness of a mica sheet or a glass sheet when we put in it in between the one of the ray of the uh, virtual source by using this we can calculate the value of uh, value of the thickness of the glass plate or the mica sheet then uh, in the viva wise uh, anyone can ask then what is the fresnel by prism then how we define a fresnel by prism a fresnel by prism which is having the having the one angle 179 degree and other two angles of the 1 degree and other two angles of 30 dash and 30 there 30 minute 30 minute so the uh, fresnel by prism is formed by attaching the two prism base to base in such a manner we can get one angle 179 and other two are 30 dash and 30 dash a fresnel by prism is a variation on the young's slit experiment <laughs> the young's slit experiment modified and uh, the fresnel by prism consists of two thin prism joined at their bases to form a isosceles triangle a single wave front uh, on the both the prism we can get the left portion of the wave front is refracted right while the right segment is reflected left so uh, in the laboratories we use the glass plate which is grinded in such a manner at one angle is 179 degree now why fresnel by prism preferred over the young's slit apparatus why we are using the fresnel by prism the fresnel by prism overcomes the difficulty associated with the extended secondary slit by replacing them with the virtual slit so this is uh, this is experiment is used to remove the secondary slit when uh, which are obtained from the configuration below this x configuration is in fact analogous to the young slit experiment and so we apply the formula for the later apparatus to the former
next in the next section we deal with the micro interferometer experiment as uh, we are discussing that uh, uh, the interference pattern are of two type due to wavefront and due to amplitude in the wavefront light split because of the wavefront and in the amplitude light split because of the amplitude in the uh, wavefront we are having the example of the fresnel by prism which we are discussing and in the amplitude discussion we are having the two experiment one is the newton's ring which previously we have discussed and second is the michelson interferometer there are difference between these two experiment uh, but by using this experiment we are getting the interference pattern uh, uh, the another example of the wavefront experiment are another example of the wavefront experiments are leards mirror fabry perret meter these are the examples of uh, uh, example of the division of the wavefront in the division of the wavefront fresnel by prism where this prism split the light into the two part two virtual sources required similarly in the newton's ring we require the two virtual sources and uh, in the next where we deal with the michelson interferometer we use the uh, again two virtual sources to get the interference pattern so these three experiment are very common in the laboratory to calculate the wavelength of monochromatic light we use the monochromatic light sometime we use the laser light to get the interference pattern so in the next lecture we deal with the michelson interferometer which is used to get the interference of the light and then we can calculate the wavelength of light all this experiment based upon the wave theory where we use the where we use the interference pattern to calculate the wavelength of light so fresnel by prism in the fresnel by prism we are getting the parallel interference fringes in the newton's rings we are getting the circular ring rings in which one center may be bright or center may be dark but here in the fresnel by prism we are getting the alternate bright and dark parallel fringes after that in the michelson interferometer we are getting all type of fringes we are getting the circular we are getting the parallel fringes we are getting the wedge shaped fringes so in the next lecture we can calculate the various type of interference pattern and by using that we can calculate the wavelength of light okay thank you very much